guys, Hacks or Tech here for another video, and today we're going to be talking about MSP360's remote desktop application. And I'm really excited about this video today because this is a tool that I fairly recently found that I personally use to access my devices. Uh, now you can use this application to access your personal devices, or you can use it for business usage as well. I'm going to review um, some of the options with pricing as well as some of the options um, in terms of features and things like that that you're going to be able to benefit from with this software. Uh, now obviously we're going to compare this today to one of the big competitors in the market, TeamViewer. Um, they are probably the most well-known free solution on the market right now and TeamViewer is a really great product uh, but there are a few quirks and one of the things that I've noticed very frequently with TeamViewer is that when you are trying to use it for personal use um, it is very easy for you to be flagged for business usage, meaning that they're assuming that you're using it for a business purpose, and then you'll lose access to the free features. That is not a problem that I've run into with this particular software. Um, it's one of the reasons I was actually motivated to switch, um, and in trying it, I really like it, um, so I wanted to kind of show you how it works um, and some of the features that it offers. So when you go to the website, MSP360's website, um, here you'll find that there is an option to go ahead and do a free trial if you're interested in trying the product. Um, this would be meaning the, the paid features, of course. But there are free features that are available as well. So if I scroll down here, you can see that it does show you some of the options and features that are available. You have unlimited sessions and endpoints that you get with the paid version. Um, and you can see the pricing here is $35 per month per admin, which is really good. Um, because you're paying per admin instead of having to pay for endpoints, which we're going to see as we move down here some more. Um, there are some main features here that are kind of relayed on the website. But here we can see a pricing model breakdown, and you can see that with MSP360, you're paying just per admin. So if you only had, for example, a couple of different administrators that are logging in and actually accessing machines, um, then you would pay for just those users versus... Um, if you, for example, had a hundred or a thousand different machines that you wanted to connect to, uh, many of the competitors do charge per endpoint. Um, and when you pay per endpoint, it can definitely get very pricey. Um, some of them could have other different kinds of costs involved as well. Um, the pricing model for MSP360 is very straightforward. Um, and long run, of course, is going to be a lot cheaper than a lot of the competitors out there. So there's a pretty good breakdown on this chart to give you an idea of what you're paying for with other competitors versus what they charge. And then of course you can see the features that are available with the free version of their remote desktop application. So you don't get the option to, um, you know, obviously have centralized management, mass deployment and reporting features, things like that. But if you're using the free version of this product, um, you're most likely not going to be using those features anyway. Um, so that's not a problem. And then you can see down here, um, another breakdown of some features here. Um, this is also of note available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, so they do have cross-platform support. Um, so really great product. I did want to show you how it works here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to pull up the application, and I'm going to show you guys how it works. Okay, so we're in the application here, and you can see that there's a few different options. On the left-hand side, there are three different windows that you can go to. On the first window here, this is the uh, window where I would actually be able to get all my information for my particular machine. So you can see that there's a computer ID here. Um, I'm going to have that blurred out for security reasons, of course, but with that option, you can just give this code to someone so that they can connect to your machine, or you can also use it to connect to your own machine if you like um, from another device. And then you have the pin that you would input when trying to connect from the application. Um, you can see here that I also have the option to enable uh, encryption if I like or set a custom password uh, and also enable or disable the unattended access, um, which means, of course, you're going to be able to access the machine without having to be physically in front of it. Likewise, on the left-hand side, if I click on this next option or select from the drop-down here, I can go to the control remote computer option here, which means I can go ahead and input someone's ID in here. Um, and that's going to allow me to remotely connect to that machine, or if I want to connect to one of my other machines, I can enter that ID there as well. Um, but also, if I have one stored, whether it's someone else's machine or my own, if I have one stored, then I can click on the drop-down and I can see that device from the list. Um, and then once I've selected the ID, I can either connect to it, or I can even click on the drop-down here, and I can go ahead and just do a command line or PowerShell 
um, option as well. And if I do that, that would allow me to just remotely execute a command uh, instead of having to physically log into the machine. So that option's there. If I click on the contact button here, then I can see all of my devices that I've added. Um, I can add new machines or export um, my list. And then I can also import that into the application if I'm going to a new machine, for example. I can even configure my proxy settings um, if I have those, um, if I need to do that. But here you can see that it is ready to connect. It's green, so it's going to show you a live status to make sure that the application is available to be accessed. Um, and as well so that you can make sure that you know you're able to remotely connect to another person's machine. Finally, on the left-hand side, this third option here is the meetings option. And from here, I can initiate a meeting. I can start one or I can join a meeting. Um, so those are all great little intuitive features similar to what TeamViewer offers as well. Um, but nice little features here that are available in the application. Okay, so those are the main features here or the main areas that you're going to go to. Um, keep in mind, obviously, you're going to have more features if you're using a paid version of the product, being able to go in and look at the queue and things like that. But what I really wanted to focus on today is the free features. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be covering in the video today is, is the free features here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect to one of my other machines that I have up and running right now so you can see how it works and how the product operates. Um, so I'm going to click on connect. And you can see here that because I was already able to um, select from the drop down the device that I had saved, I didn't have to actually enter anything. I didn't have to enter the computer ID. Um, if you don't have it saved, you would need to enter that computer ID. But in this case, since I had it saved, I can just select it. And then all I have to do now is enter my pin. So I'm going to enter the pin for the device here and click on enter. And it's going to authorize the connection and then connect me straight in. Great. All right. So I've got the window open here. I'm going to expand it. Um, and I go up here and I can see all my different controls on both the bottom and the top. Um, I can also full screen this if I would like. Um, I have the option to adjust my sound settings. I can um, even turn on my microphone on and off here, which is really nice. Um, you can use this with dual monitors, so that's something to keep in mind. And you do have the option to chat back and forth as well. So if I do a quick chat here, this is with myself, so I'll see that down here. Uh, but you do have the chat options there if you're um, using this to help someone um, under the free version, for example, maybe a family member or something like that. So more view options here. I've got my um, quality options here that I can fine tune. I have my file transfer options. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, which was something I saw people asking a lot of questions about, is you actually have two file transfer options, but yes, you do have the ability to upload files um, to the machine, but also back and forth. So it's not just a one-way transfer. Um, if I do from here and click on Upload Files, so here I can choose any files on my machine that I want to transfer to the remote device. So that is an option if you use this option up here. Likewise, if I click on the option down here and click on Upload Files, it is now looking at the remote machine that I'm accessing and I can now take files from the remote PC and transfer them back to the device that I'm accessing that machine from. So you do have a two-way transfer option here. Um, some people weren't sure how to do that, but that is how you um, would transfer files one way or another. So I'll just create a quick test file here and I can select this and click on open and the file transfer has completed. So it's now saved that to uh, my machine, my local machine that I'm using to access this device. If I did that from the other option up here, then it would send the file to the remote machine. So that's all super easy. Um, a couple other features that you have here, you can manage your connections, um, switch roles with your partner, you can disconnect, all of those different things. But you have a whole suite of really amazing options here if you click on this drop down um, on the left hand side here. So you can go in here, you can actually do a session recording, you can initiate your control delete. Um, you can, again, change all the other settings that you had over here, like resolution, things like that. Um, you can perform diagnostics, go in the diagnostic section here, um, check for updates. So all that stuff is available in the menu options here. Uh, and if you don't want to see this menu, by the way, you can always click on the pen option here, it's going to hide that. Uh, and what I usually like to do when I'm accessing the machine, um, is I will also go over here, I will click on the minimize option here so that I'm not looking at this screen all the time. And so then you have a pretty 
good full screen ver version of what you're trying to access here. And again, if you do want to make it full screen, I can hover over here uh, and I can just click on the full screen option here. So it does make it completely full screen. That's actually just fitting it to the, uh, the window there. So there's that to fit it. And this is actually the full screen mode. So I can full screen it like that. And now you can see now it's actually taking up the whole screen here. And you can see the way that it actually um, sets everything up here. One of the things I found with some of the other tools that I use is that even when I full screen and I tried to adjust the settings, um, it did not adjust the screen to completely fit my monitor. Um, so I'm not sure why I had that issue with other tools, but you can see here that my monitor actually, or you might not be able to actually physically see it, but you can see that it's gonna be full screen in your window. So on my monitor right now, this is 100% full screen. There's no black bars or anything like that. Other tools I've used, I've had that problem where it does not completely full screen it. Um, more specifically because the device that I'm accessing is a laptop and that laptop screen is smaller so it usually scales down. So the nice thing here is that it's actually scaling the window to fully fit um, my monitor here. So I really like that. So I can exit my full screen here. And again, that other option was just if you want to expand it or not uh, in the window that you have here. So I really like that. The other thing that's really nice about the tool here is that it's just very easy to um, to use, but also very reliable in terms of the connection. Um, and when comparing to things like TeamViewer, which is usually the standard, um, I would expect it to have a little bit of an advantage. A lot of the other tools as well, things like LogMeIn, um, they are very well-known solutions, but the connection speed for me has been consistently very good with this product, which I really like. Um, that paired with the simplicity and the fact that I don't have to worry about it um, kind of registering me or marking me as a business user is really nice. Um, again, those were some of the reasons that I switched to this product. So I think you can kind of get the gist of, of how you would use the product here and kind of um, the response rate here. I just kind of wanted to show you guys the speed that it's opening things um, and kind of executing commands here. Uh, I'm physically looking at my laptop too and there's very little latency between the device uh, and the movement on my screen right now. So that's really good. Um, so really like the connectivity, um, the reliability of this, and just the ease of use with the product. If I click on that X in that top right-hand corner, you can see it takes me straight out of the application and back to my screen here. Um, and again, I do have the option to set up my unattended access from here um, on that other device. So if I want to access it um, without having to put in a pin and all of those different things, I can fine tune and configure it to make it easier for me to access that device. Um, the other thing I can do here is if I click on the settings gear on the left hand side here, I can generate an invitation. I can also connect with an invitation ID. I can play my recorded sessions that I've done and I can go to my diagnostics menu here as well. So I did find this tool myself um, just in searching for options out there as an alternative to TeamViewer. And I, again, have been using this since, so really like the product, and it has actually been rebranded um, since I started using it. It was formerly just under Cloudberry, and now it's under this MSP360 branding. Other than that, though, guys, um, that's really all I wanted to cover in this video is just to give you a look at how the product works, um, the UI of the product, and some of the comparisons of the value that you get with this product. Let me know what you think, guys, uh, when compared to other solutions that are out there. Um, does this look like a good solution to you? Is this something that you've used, something that you're interested in using? So I will have a link in the description so that you can download the product and use it yourself. Again, if you would like to try the free version and use that, or if you would like to try the paid version as well, both of those options are available. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.